Well, hello there and welcome to Travels with Jordy on this Christmas Day 2021. Merry Christmas to you all. If this is your first visit to the show, my name is Peter Knowles and I live on this classic wooden motor cruiser here in Victoria, British Columbia, along with the loving memory of my pup Jordy. All the while fixing it up for some pretty ambitious cruising. If that's the sort of thing you might find interesting, please consider sticking around and subscribing. I'd love to have you. Merry Christmas to you and for those of you who aren't celebrating Christmas today a fabulous day as well okay no rest for the wicked time to get this panel installed but before that I have to get some actual uh, protective finish on here I have two or three coats of tongue oil um, but that's still not enough I'm going to use some of my favorite wipe on poly now this is not a particularly sophisticated finish um, those of you who've been watching for a while will have seen I've used it before, but it's a very convenient, very easy to apply, very thin, uh, gives a hand rubbed look. It's very, very handy for interior only. You would not use this outside. Anyway, so I'm going to take this apart, give it a little sand and get some of this on. This is 400 grit. I'm using it on a sponge just to knock the highs off. So this is not a natural product, uh, so uh, definitely gloves are in order. Now it's very, very thin, so it's basically you can put it on pretty much in any direction and then finish off with the grain. I just love this stuff. Now, of course, it also puts on a very, very thin finish, so you need several coats before there's any real sheen, but um, it's so easy to use, it's worthwhile. Okay, well, with the electrical panel uh, reassembled, having had put four coats of a um, wipe-on poly on it, I'm really quite pleased now to wire it up. But before we get to that, let's talk about these, shall we? <laughs> I don't think I have ever missed the mark by such a wide degree as proposing to use stainless steel bus bars. Even though they were an incredible amount of work to make, they're completely the wrong material. Now I knew that stainless steel wasn't as good as a conductor as say copper or brass, but I didn't know by how much and I should have checked. So that's the beauty of the internet. Thank you all who pointed that out to me. Uh, apparently it is 41 times more resistant to conductivity than copper. So I have gone to great expense and a quite a bit of difficulty to order some bus bar material in tinned copper uh, won't be here till the new year uh, but of course it'll be very easy to drill and in the meantime I have some rather high uh, labor uh, mechanical pieces uh, for something or other anyway so for all of you who are concerned about that we've got that sorted now what I want to do is get this panel installed and one of the few things I want to do before I actually physically install it uh, is make sure I can secure these little meters because they fall out every time I turn this over anyway is wire up all these little uh, LEDs uh, millions of little wires. I have procured some nice small uh, 22 to 28 gauge um, or 18 to 22 a gauge um, uh, connectors for this because one side of each of these wires will go to the breaker. So in other words, when the breaker is on, it's activated. The other side, in the case of 12 volt, the ground, in the case of 110 volt, the neutral, are all wired together on a bus. I, I, I considered buying a big long negative bus bar for in here to do it but you know what i'm going to do i'm just going to daisy chain them with um butt connectors and so they'll all be in a daisy chain i i'm perfectly happy with the way i'm doing that uh first thing i gotta do is find a way to secure these in i've had a couple of options uh one uh let me just show you originally uh they had had these little clips on the side uh to snap in however they were designed for thin sheet metal and in the half inch thick plywood here they were useless so I just cut them off. Um, so what I need to do is find some way to secure them in. One way of doing it is with hot glue. Let's say I put them in, I align them correctly and I put a little glob of hot glue around here. The other which is not nearly as elegant but maybe just as effective and easier to maintain is just to put a tiny little screw down uh, in each corner or at least two in each one uh, which will jam this in against the plywood and be much more easily removable so i'm gonna i'm gonna play with a couple of options around that 
Okay, so after having fiddled with uh, some tiny little screws to do this, I, I've determined that that is a really ugly solution. So a slightly less ugly solution uh -huh, is uh, to use a hot glue gun. Now, those of you who've been following for a little while know that I don't have the best relationship with hot glue guns. I, in fact, you would have thought that would... Anyway, uh, so I bought a slightly better one, an Arrow brand. I'm sure I'm still buying garbage hot glue guns. It's also a tiny little crafty one. But anyway, I think it's going to be a reasonable solution for this particular little project. Just to squirt a little hot glue. Got to pump prime this next one with my chin. Along there. And then along. Oh, lovely the way it squirts out little excess strings of hot glue. And a little bit over here. And I'll let that cool before I let go of it. I think that's actually a pretty reasonable solution. Um, it's still relatively reversible. Just take a little knife and cut that hot glue out and uh, we're off to the races. All right, next one here. I'll let it cool in this direction. Yeah, yeah. Okay, this rat's nest. To achieve a reasonable degree of neatness, uh, the black wires, which in this case were on the 110 side, uh, the AC side, I'm going to trim a little bit shorter, about that much shorter. I'm going to say the length of the breaker. And I'm going to restrip this relatively long. Um, to remind those of you who haven't been watching for a while, that my technique for putting tiny, tiny wires into uh, terminals that are a bit too big, and this must be like about a 40 gauge, I don't know, it's just a hair filament, is to fold it over. Uh, sometimes, in extreme cases, I'll do it twice, but of course this is a very, very low current application, so it's not that crucial. And crimp. There we go. And what I'm doing, just to keep tidy, is I'm actually affixing them to the breakers as I go along. And then that way I'll heat shrink them all together in a row. I'm going to wait a bit to heat shrink these because now I got to deal with all these common ones. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I've decided to just brute force this. Basically, these uh, pigtails are long enough. I'm going to uh, bring them all together, twist them all together into one uh, butt connector that will connect to a white uh, 14 gauge. So this little project will begin by lengthening the uh, stripped sections of all these wires, trim the conductors to a suitable length, Put them in a nice big butt connector. Splendid. And now the other end of this. Excellent. And now all we need is some heat shrinking. Okay, let's do this all over again. And just to absolutely annoy those of you who despise morettes, because this is a temporary connection, yes, I'm going to put a little morette on it. <laughs> That'll do for now. Okay. Okay, in the absence of a bus bar, this is as far as I can go with the, um, the main breakers. Um, although I am going to get it into service uh, shortly with some jumpers, but we'll deal with that when we get in there. Okay, so the last major thing to wire up um, on the panel here is all the wiring to the uh, voltmeter ammeters. Problem is it would have been nice to bundle all these wires with some multi-core wire, but multi-core marine wire is hard to get. There are from Anchor a few different um, uh, multi-core wires, <coughs> excuse me, five, and maybe even up to seven conductor uh, for going up mass and stuff like that. But I can't get them locally and I don't want to have to buy a whole spool of them. So I simply bought a spool of 18 gauge brown wire. Brown because I'm not using brown anywhere else in the system. And as a result, um, I'll know exactly what these are as soon as I use them. Now, what they won't be is color coded based on what I'm doing with them here. So. Again, you electrical purists are going to faint at that. I'm basically putting 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 brown wires out of here through a bundle, and I've just got to keep track of what they are. I wasn't buying 14 different colors of wire. Okay, so this P-clip will bundle all these 14 wires, 
and I'll just have to label them as I work my way along. They'll all go down there in a bundle and back into the main panel. So um, the connections at uh, these uh, little meters are simply little um, clamp screw terminals, so fairly straightforward. Now interestingly enough, um, the AC meters here, uh, one side for current, one side for uh, voltage, uh, but there's no polarity, so there's no reason to worry about which is which. I'll simply mark them off as uh, the voltage side or the current side. All right, and these two wires are collectively G1. What an awesome system, eh? All right, well, this is definitely starting to get a bit unruly. Time to get it actually mounted on the uh, the box in the forecastle, and we can start to sort some of this out. Okay, then. Uh, this is both a moment I've been looking forward to and at the same time kind of dreading. Now I can't close this panel for a bit because of these breakers that are hanging here. Okay. Now in principle, this is awesome. Uh, it's easy to work here. It's easy to work here. I haven't actually confirmed that this door will shut yet, but I can't just now. Time to start actually moving some circuits off this temporary stuff onto the actual breakers. Easier said than done. Okay, I know you can't see me all that well. It's hard, would be hard to get you any closer. Um, I won't put you through too much of this. It's getting late in the afternoon and it's getting dark and cold, but I'm going to bite the bullet and uh, transfer uh, AC circuits uh, over to this new panel and hope I can get it all done in the next, well, hour or so before uh, I lose power. These are actually live, so I've got to be a little bit careful with what I'm holding on to here. Okay, let's do disconnect shore power. Okay then, so with no shore power, I just have to make sure that the inverter isn't making up for lost watts. The inverter remote runs off a old style telephone cord, RJ11, RJ, I forget what it is. Anyway, so we can now control the inverter from here and make sure it's not in invert mode and take it out. Okay, we're not inverting. We have no live uh, AC here. Yay! Continue to take apart some stuff. Okay, so this bus bar was just a temporary hot uh, bus bar um, to set up those temporary breakers. So in this location is going to go a terminal strip that will deal with all of this. But not yet. We need to get some power back on. So out of here will come eight circuits that will come through a cable, a bundle up to um, the eight first eight breakers on here. Again, there's room for two more and there's room for two more. Um, I'm sure two uh, extra breakers on this system will look after me. So what I need to do now is transfer this main hot inlet, which I had uh, arranged to be long enough when I did this so that it could travel through the bundle onto the panel because basically the main hot um, comes over to feed the bus bar that isn't here yet um, for all the breakers. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to run it through this imaginary bundle and up into the top breaker. Now, I don't have a power bar, so I'm going to use my handy dandy little jumpers that I was using earlier here to jump together a few breakers just to give myself power. Basically, I have two circuits and one of hot water, so I only need three circuits live on here. There we go. Not enormously pretty, but it'll do. Now to bring over circuits from the terminal strip to the actual breakers. For that, I need some black wire. All right, and to do this reasonably tidily, let's add some P-clips. Again, I apologize. I'll take you for a tour in here in a second. These are probably a bit small. Isn't the world an endless hunt for the perfect size P-clip? Oh dear. Okay, so that's gonna go. All right, and uh, being no power, I'm gonna use my sweet little butane torch that I was gifted off the Amazon wish list some time ago. Very handy for this. And down, over, about, gonna come in from the end. So it's this long, I think. All right, so I've run the three circuits as well as the neutral uh, so that the LEDs work. Now, just a little bit of tidying up. 
course, I can't close the door yet, but I can re-energize the shore power and fire up these circuits and get some heat back on. <laughs> All right then, battery charger fired up for a second. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this, but let's try first circuit. It's gone on and yes, indeed, it's live because the computer has decided to turn on. Uh, the next circuit is the aft and uh, I can see from here the light is on on the heater back there and the last circuit is the hot water and well I'm just going to assume it's working. So we have three AC circuits where you're back to where we were uh, a couple of hours ago. Splendid! Still in a bit of a mess here. I gotta deal with this. This this is really a lot. So what's gonna happen here is uh, I can find it. Yeah, here we go. This was set up for a terminal strip, which I'm going to return to here. And uh, all these wires plug into this terminal strip, and then at least they're tidy. And then from there, I can carry on to whatever the loads are. Some of them will be right within the panel, and some have to be down on the main um, high current bus. Uh, more on that later. Well, good morning. Well, I'm back at work wiring up all the meter leads to this uh, terminal strip. And uh, it's going to be a sea of brown wires. <laughs> Let you have a little look here. Um, so as you saw, all the brown wires coming off all the meters down through here, and they'll join the main bundle down under here onto this terminal strip. Now, if you remember, there are 14 wires for the meters and only 12 spaces in this terminal strip. Well, that's awesome because this meter right here is actually reading the AC at the panel. In other words, the AC uh, power and current that's being consumed by the panel itself. So I'll be able to put the sensors for that right here on the board and here the wires for that. So I don't have to bring all the wires through the bundle and into the box here. Anyway, I'll just keep pulling wires here. It's it's relatively satisfying. Okay, so I've got you nestled in with me here. I'll show you the technique I use uh, for routing wires um, where I have to get the length right. So what I'm doing, I'm populating this, uh, not in the order that they are, but in the order I find the wires. So the next wire is 3A, which is the top terminal on the third uh, meter. Very, very simple. So what I'll do, I bundle all the wires together the way they're going to be bundled once they're zip tied together, which is following this path here. And then I just keep grabbing it on the bundle and I work my way up and along and up and then over and then up to where it's gonna go pretty straightforward i know i'm gonna cut it here okay and the crimp and the heat shrink this was three a so this is the three set and it's a i'm sure you've seen enough of that all right, I'm going to leave um, the sensors that are for the AC circuit in here for now. Uh, this is pretty much populated. How about that? All brown wire is just an electrician's dream. Well, it'll be well documented in a drawing. Okay, it's time to deal with the uh, DC mess here. Um, pulling away all this temporary stuff, uh, bring uh, some circuits over to the DC side of the panel and get a couple of those live, especially <laughs> these two, which are the bilge pumps. Well then folks, I can't quite say it's pretty, uh, but I have all the circuits going again that were working before, plus a few more, and I'll spend uh, the next couple of weeks tidying that all up. But it is functional. Let's just get it. It's basically a friction fit right now. It seems to be a little tighter than it used to be. There we go. Anyway, and I got two of the voltmeter and ammeters working. So up here on the right, uh, we can see we're at 13.7 volts DC. This is the DC side. Uh, that's because it's currently charging off the inverter. And I'm currently drawing 2.1 amps, which is mostly this circuit, which is the um, uh, the heating blowers and pump. So over here on the AC side, we see we have 114 volts, which is uh, not too bad, really, considering how much load is being drawn in the marina right now. And I'm drawing 17.9 uh, amps, and that is almost entirely uh, heat. Uh, for instance, if I turn off this circuit here, that should drop quite a bit because this is the aft cabin circuit, which is the uh, which has a heater on it. Uh, so forward cabin, including a heater, aft cabin, including a heater, and hot water. The hot water, although is on, is not drawing right now because the hot water is uh, is made. Anyway, I'm super super pleased with the panel. 
there's lots to be done yet but at least I'm up and running and now every new circuit I add I can add into the panel properly and continue to tidy it up really 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 pleased as you can see over my shoulder i'm also editing this episode while doing this work uh, because it's getting to be late on christmas eve and i want to make sure this episode gets up for you tomorrow and there's a really nice dinner uh, i'm going to start in a few minutes over on mv zephyrus and i want to make sure i get over there for that now listen uh, besides it being christmas and again uh, merry christmas to those of you who are celebrating christmas today tomorrow boxing day on sunday at one o'clock pacific time i'm going to do a live stream from here aboard kind of a year-end recap what's coming next anyway and uh if you have a few minutes free on uh, on boxing day this year um, please consider uh, joining in and checking on the live stream I'll put the link up for it shortly and uh, so it'll be there waiting for you hope to see you on Sunday one o'clock Pacific time cozy by the fire aboard MV Zephyrus and Lady Zephyrus here is about to whip up her famous to Torch me anyway Torchera which is a uh, is a uh, Christmas Eve uh, tradition for us mm -hmm. what you got going on it well we got everything all set out ready to roll and I'll just do the quick run through. We've got, of course, salt, pepper, garlic, onions, that's a given. And then we've got some potatoes that act as a bit of a binder. We've got, we're using pork and beef. Well, a little bit of stock once we start simmering it down. And here's the secret. Everyone's got their own spicing. What I like to do in Sortier is cinnamon, believe it or not, allspice, cloves, oregano, and a little bit of heat from Korean pepper flakes, or, you know, you can always just use regular old pepper flakes, and butter pastry using some very special butter that we got from our neighbors. They were giving us some... Oh, that's right. Things. That's that amazing butter. Yeah. Really so we're using that. that amazing butter. And so, shall we get started? Get started. Can Let's I can started. I peek over your shoulder now and then? Now and then. Get a little bit of heat starting. Oregano. Spice. A little bit of beef stock. So it can soft. And we're also going to add in a little bit some potato. See all those blobs of different color there? Oh, yeah, yeah. There's butter. Oh, yeah. <laughs> It's the glue! Oh my god! Well, hello and welcome to the Christmas edition Travels with Jordy. Actually, it's a uh, Yuletide Cider of the Week. We'll get into that in just a second. So excited about Torch Air. Awesome. Love it. Love it. And we're in our... Christmas jammies! <laughs> waiting for Santa Claus! <laughs> Christmas Eve. Okay, straight on to the Yuletide Cider. This is uh, from uh, Marydale uh, Cidery here on Vancouver Island. Did we figure out where? Somewhere up island somewhere. Everywhere's up island from Everywhere's here. Everywhere's up island from here, exactly. <laughs> and it's called Yule Fuel. And it's a, what did you say? Ladies? Cider, it's a, spirits, and spices. All in one. Mm -hmm. Anyway, we've been pretty excited about this. Let me have your glass. Yeah. I'll pour you a little. Seems like just the thing for torch air. Oh man, that smells good. Well, what a great week this has been. Got a few extra little things done on the boat. Got the wiring done. Got the panel done. And uh, that's a great place to be able to leave off the year. Because we're going to be pretty busy over the next couple of days. Alright, let's see what we think of Yule Fuel. From Marydale. Cheers. Are we cheersing to anybody? Not just yet. Oh, we're cheersing to yet. each other just okay. now. Cheers. Cheers! Merry, Merry happy Christmas, Christmas Eve. Eve. <laughs> well, it's Christmas Eve to us. It's Christmas Day for you. Christmas Day. Christmas Day. Up. Merry Christmas. Whoa, that is a little bit different. Oh, I love it. It's yeah, wow. spicy. It is kind of a, um, you can taste the spirits in it. Yeah. It is mixture. Mm -hmm. It has brandy in it. It's got something yummy in it. It's actually... Just gonna, it's going to be perfect with this. Oh, that's 
Okay, we'll get the housekeeping uh, out of the way. I want to thank and congratulate Marshall Williams, last week's winner of a Travels with Jordy uh, t-shirt. And get a hold of me, we'll make sure you get it. Okay, all we need next is to dive in, but we won't, uh, we won't keep people waiting for uh, the word of the week for next week will be... We decided on something. Oh, cheer! Cheer! cheer. Good cheer! <laughs> cheer! It's very Christmassy. Use the word cheer. Use the word cheer. You know what to do with it. We're going to dive right into this. Merry Christmas to all. Cheers.